Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. <laughs> It's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening pleasure, with lyrics by Marilyn Williams and music by Matty Malden. So, hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hey, Yelling. Where have you been all afternoon? Oh, Abbott, I went to my Uncle Joe Barclay's wedding. He married a bearded tattoo lady in the first... A bearded tattooed lady? Yeah, Uncle Joe, he's always been crazy about jungle pictures. <laughs> but I knew he was going to marry a fortune teller till it told me for $10. <laughs> all right, try me in the sky. Hey, Gwen. Joe! All right, take me. Now, don't be... Please I'm a dope <laughs> Wait a minute. There's loads. You mean to tell me that a fortune teller... Well, you got me right with you now. <laughs> Look, the kids, oh, he's he's going to straighten it out. <laughs> you mean to tell me that a fortune teller charged you $10 just to read your mind? No, $1 for reading my mind and $9 for finding it. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. What does Uncle Joe do for a living? Well, he's a babysitter. Uh, how did he get started as a babysitter? Well, one night a woman a woman asked him to sit with her baby, and then she went out and never came back. Uh, who was the woman? His first wife. I... <laughs> That's awful. Yes, at twenty five cents an hour, she owes him twelve thousand dollars. Is he a good babysitter? I'll say. One night he was sitting with a baby, and the kid swallowed a bottle of DTT. My goodness! What did Uncle Joe do? Well, he threw the baby over his shoulder and burped him. What ha- What happened? The kid killed every fly within ten miles. <laughs> Oh, get him out. <laughs> well, there's a sample of the high grade nonsense you'll be hearing for the next half hour. Before we get back to it, listen to this. Did you know that any listener may now have an opportunity to appear as a contestant on Break the Bank? That's right, any listener. As you probably know, ABC's Break the Bank is that very popular Friday night quiz show where contestants try for a jackpot which is always worth at least $1,000 and often much more. Well, recently, Break the Bank inaugurated a new feature whereby listeners are eligible to enter their names in a giant wishbowl. Winners will not only get an opportunity to break the bank, but they also receive free airplane or railroad transportation for two to and from New York as available. In addition... Each wishbowl winner will live in a suite in the famous New York Hotel from Friday until Sunday. And he or she will be given $150 spending money besides any amount received on the show. For all the details on this wonderful wishbowl here, break the bank when it's broadcast over most ABC stations tomorrow night. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Around. Who are you waving at? I'm waving at my new girl from Texas, way back here. <laughs> That's her in the third row with the red dress on. What do you think of her, Abbott? Costello. That's your new girl? That's her. Brother, she is the ugliest, <laughs> most repulsive, <laughs> most stupid looking dame I've ever seen. <laughs> She's even got warts on her nose. <laughs> You can talk louder, Rabbit. She's deaf, too. (laughs) How can you possibly be interested in a girl like that? I don't know, Rabbit. Her face haunts me. Everywhere I go, I see her face. I see her face when I'm awake. I see her face when I'm asleep. I even see her face when I get to go to get my car washed at the wash rack. I do too. I feel great. Wait a minute. How can you see her face when you take your car to the wash rack? She works there. She's on hubcaps. 
How did you ever get acquainted with this girl? She wrote me a fan letter. She's one of my millions of women picture fans. Well, you ought to get out of pictures, Costello. I can't have it. I just point my many millions of women fans. Millions? Millions. Millions? Well, thousands of women would be disappointed. Thousands of women? There are hundreds of women who would feel badly about it. Did you say hundreds? My mother would raise Cain. <laughs> Why don't you stop running around and get yourself engaged with some nice girl? You know. Do you know how to get engaged? Oh, yes, I heard it on the radio. They said if you want to get engaged, use Woodbury soap. So I bought 12 cases. Did you get engaged? Heck no, I was so busy washing, I didn't have time. <laughs> Will you please talk sense? Whatever happened to that uh, little red headed uh, manicure she was going She insulted me, Abbott. Highly insulted me. What do you mean? Hmm. For my birthday, she gave me a Boy Scout knife. Well, that's not an insult. Sure. Anybody knows I wouldn't knife a Boy Scout. I... <laughs> oh, stop. I suppose you've got a date with some silly girl again tonight. I can't go out tonight, Abbott. I lost my wallet. Are you sure you lost your wallet? Yeah. Uh, you'd better look in your pockets again. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Nope. Nope. No wallet, but here's a note. What does the note say? It says, you lost your wallet last night. You can have it back by calling 8835 Sunset Boulevard. P.S. Bring a friend. My roommate is reading this over my shoulder. <laughs> Evidently, that note is from two girls. Forget about it. And quit running around with women. Why don't you take up tennis or golf? Oh, tennis or golf? Yes. Don't you know what good, clean fun is? No. What good is... I... <laughs> Take me, for instance. I play golf every day. This afternoon, I played 18 holes with Hedy Lamar. How that girl, her, that girl handles her iron. How was she with the woods? I, I don't know. She stayed out on the fairway all day. <laughs> uh, show me where it says that in the script. I had never... <laughs> Where you get that kind of dialogue? Come on, That's very, very clever laughing. <laughs> <Hell. laughs> oh, just never mind. I'm entitled to tell a joke once in a while. We've got lots of jokes in my family. That was... <laughs> That was one of my father's jokes. Who are you, one of your mother's jokes? I... <laughs> I'm looking for Luke Costello. I represent the Father's Day Committee of Cucamonga. I'm Luke Costello. What, what, what does the Father's Day Committee want with me? The people of Cucamonga have elected you as the Father of the Year of Cucamonga. This ain't Father's Day, and I don't even live in Cucamonga. That's good. The farther you stay away from Cucamonga, the better we like it. <laughs> I've seen that fellow's face before. I'll tell you where you could see it again. Where? Any Thursday at the State Unemployment Insurance Office. <laughs> Starting this Thursday. Aye, <laughs> that's right, Costello. I don't have to work. I'm the most independent man in town. Uh, what makes you so independent? I got a used car for sale. <laughs> that shuts you up, Costello. You better watch out. Watch out that you don't wind up uh, at that unemployment office. Ah, oh, don't you worry about that. I, mean, I have to worry about work. And my girl got a job this week with the Los Angeles bus company. Your girl is a lady bus driver? Sure. She started Monday. She opens the door. She takes the fare. She makes the change. She gives out transfers. She calls up the street. She tells the people to move back on the bus. Yes. Next week, she's going to learn to drive. Right? <laughs> Well, uh, have you got a driver's license? Yes, I got a junior driver's license. What's a junior driver's license? That only allows you to hit midgets. Uh, <laughs> the California driver's laws are very strict, especially about pedestrian zones. Now, when you see a pedestrian crossing the safety zone, what do you do? Same as all the other California drivers? I step on a gas and take them up on a sidewalk where they belong? <laughs> I don't like you Come on, sweep up the floor, disinfect the microphone, clean up the place, and throw out that garbage can over there. Uh, wait. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute, wait hey, a minute. Hey, garbage hey. can? That's Lou Costello, my friend. I was right the first time. Throw that garbage can out of here. <laughs> and another thing, what's the idea of cooking corned beef and cabbage in this studio? Phew, smells terrible. 
Nobody was cooking corned beef and cabbage. This was the Abbott and Costello program. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Oh, not when you like corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> that did it. Not for playing to the president of ABC. What right has this not headed Nickaboo got to come in here and try to disrupt our oh. program? Now, just a minute. Just a minute. Not headed. Are you trying to create the impression that I'm bald? <laughs> <laughs> Brother, if you ain't bald, somebody get you a haircut with a bare midriff. <laughs> Why, I just, I'll straighten this out. What are you doing in this studio? Mr. Rabbit, I work for ABC. I've worked here for 12 years. I run the elevator. Now, uh, wait a minute. There's no elevator in the building. Go on, loudmouth. Tell the boss. Make me lose my job. <laughs> Well, don't stand there. Tell him. Have him kick me off the payroll. Oh, now, just a minute, mister. Aren't you ashamed of yourself accepting money for doing nothing? Accepting money for doing nothing? How long you been in radio? Ten years. Look who's talking. <laughs> now, listen, you. I mean, this, this guy is not only bald, he's ugly, he's broken down, but in spite of all that, there's something about him that keeps... Oh. Quiet, Godzilla. Uh, mister, why have you interrupted our show? Sir Abbott, I have a very important announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Broadcasting Company and the sponsors of the Abbott and Costello Show proudly present, direct from her recent triumphs in London, England, that great singing star, Miss Marilyn Williams. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Floyd. Floyd? <laughs> well, la da <laughs> Floyd! Uh, leave him alone, Costello. Miss Williams, welcome to our program. I'm sure our listeners are going to love you, and I hope you will like me and my partner. But, old chap, I think you're top hole, and I think the fellow is positively ripping. <laughs> I know I shouldn't have worn those tight pants. <laughs> Costello, that's just an English expression. The English have a different customs than ours, you know. What do you mean? Well, for instance, in this country, if a girl sneezes, you say gesundheit. If an English girl sneezes, you, uh, you kiss her. That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Costello, ma'am, I didn't sneeze. Why wait until the last minute? <laughs> My, Mr. Costello, where did you ever learn to pucker your lips to a point like that? I used to thread needles for my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Miss Williams, we have some gifts for you to bid. Bid you welcome to America. First, please accept this beautiful diamond ring. Here, I'll slip it on your finger. Oh, it's divine. You may kiss my finger. Hmm. Now, may I place this beautiful bracelet on your arm? Thank you. You may kiss my wrist. And now, this lovely necklace. Oh, thank you. You may kiss me on my neck. All right, Christelle, now it's your turn. <laughs> I pass. What? I, I bought a pair of shoes. <laughs> Oh, you're so droll, Mr. Costello. But for being so nice to me, I'm going to write to His Majesty and have him make you a knight of the bar. Please, don't do it. Why not? You think I'm going to fight England and back every Saturday night just to scrub the king's back? You're not. <laughs> it's easy to see that you've never been to England, Mr. Costello. Well, if I have, here's a copy of the London Times. My picture's on one side and the king's picture's right next to it. So it is. Do you see what it says on my picture? Costello comes to England and tells the same as joke. But look what it says under the king's picture. What? God save the king. Uh, Miss Williams, did you have a nice trip here to America? Oh, rather. Robin. You know, I crossed the Atlantic on the Queen Mary. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the old girl could swim that far. <laughs> oh, 
But before I get too thick, let's interrupt it for another reminder on a serious subject. Did you know there's a network quiz show where listeners compete for a big jackpot prize by telephoning the program? That's right. The listeners phone in collect. That program is what my name. Broadcast over most of these ABC stations each Saturday night. Here's how it works. At the end of What's My Name, you hear the voice of a famous personality. Then, listeners of a certain selected city, and it may be yours, are invited to telephone in the name of the owner of that voice. The first correct answer wins the jackpot. It's a lot of fun, even if your city isn't the selected one. But the fun doesn't start with the jackpot question. You'll also enjoy hearing studio contestants play What's My Name? As MCs Arlene Francis and Carl Frank post the questions. They pretend to be famous people and give sets of clues as to their identity. Yes, but well, quiz fun, don't miss what's my name, heard over most of these stations Saturday night. Now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Come on, Abbott, now let's get going. Now, wait a minute, Costello. Let's turn on the spotlight. Let's turn it on on our singing gal from England. Oh, that's great for us, and it's great for everybody listening. Here she is, folks, Marilyn Williams with Maddie Malnick's music. You do something to me, something simply mystifies me. Tell me, why should it be? You have the power to hypnotize me. Let me leave me just so. You do that, you do that, you do so well. You do something to me. Nobody else could do. Away. Why, why did you say Merry Christmas? That's fresh material, Abbott. <laughs> now, if anybody says Merry Christmas on the radio, they stole it from us. Right. <laughs> Don't be silly, Costello. Nobody steal our material. That's so. For your information, Mr. Milton Burl did a joke last week that we're going to use next Thursday. <laughs> Say that, inferring that we would stoop so low as to use other comedians' jokes. Well, why, we can go on for years and years with our own stuff. Why don't we do it? Okay. <laughs> Let's go. You start. Okay. Here I go. Go ahead. Hey, Abbott! Talk and Costello. Well, that didn't take long. Let's get back to the other guy's joke now. <laughs> Now, the trouble with you is that instead of thinking up new jokes, you spend all your time chasing girls. I saw you last night with that redhead. Yes. What a girl. Have it all night long. She kept doing my ear off. You mean she talked too much? Nope. She just chewed my ear off. <laughs> I understand she's a Spanish dancer. Yep. She does a very unusual dance. She dances around the brim of a Mexican hat. 
She danced all around the brim of the hat and then kicked it with her heels. Well, what's unusual about that? Lots of Spanish dancers dance on the top of a Mexican hat. Well, it's still on the Mexican head, right? <laughs> well, Costello, no, no one but a silly girl like that would go out with you. Now, take me. I get the better looking girls because I'm handsome. Abbott, I don't like to hurt your feelings, but since you brought it up, I gotta tell you. You are the youngest man I ever saw. <laughs> I'm ugly. You're so ugly that it makes me wish I had the hiccup so I could look at you and get scared. I... <laughs> well, anyway, you've got to admit I'm a pretty classy girl. Uh 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 uh. Uh uh. Uh-uh. Come to think of it, Abbott, you were wearing pinchback suits long before any other fellow. That's right. Long afterwards, too. Uh... <laughs> I'm the one with class. Yes, sir. I'm the one with class. Why, when I went to school, the girls used to flock around me like flies around a pot of honey. Yes, and I'll have to admit, you haven't changed much. I haven't a bad, have I? No, you've lost a little of the honey, but you still, still got, got the pot. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Costello. Abbott's nephew... Norman, why do you keep coming in here every week? Well, I want to ask you something, Mr. Costello. My mother told me that if I, if I watch you... Out of ten, Abbott. Going through. <laughs> well, give the boy a chance. What's on your mind, Norman? I want to ask you something, Mr. Costello. My mother told me that if I watch you all the time, before I knew it, I'd be an actor just like you. She thinks she's right here. Your mother is right, Norman. You might end up being just like me. No kidding, and I thought you'd just tell me that to scare me. <laughs> That's a nice boy, folks. The teacher told me that it was only it would only take two more years to make a moron out of him. <laughs> Abbott, why don't you keep that bum home? Costello, don't you call that actor a bum. Don't you call that bum an actor. I... <laughs> no, never mind that. Norman stays on this show. He's got sex with you. And don't forget that he has 200 women in this audience Every week, and every one of them wants to be loud. You need to stand there and tell me that there are 200 women out there right now that want to be loved? Yes. And I'm up one of the five. <laughs> That's what <laughs> That's the how can you be so stupid? Every day you add more stupidity to your age. How do you do it? I take vitamins. <laughs> and my uncle Mike takes vitamins too. We're worried about him, Abbott. All day long, he runs around the house and tackles. He thinks he's a chicken. Well, wait a minute. If he thinks he's a chicken, why don't you get him out of the house and, and, and send him to a hospital? He would, but we need the aid. I... <laughs> oh, thanks. Hey, Abbott, a fan letter from one of my listeners. I'll read it. I will. I think I'm going to read it. <laughs> Dear Lou Costello, you told me that sounds like a burning building, doesn't it? <laughs> Dear Lou Costello, I have been listening to your Sam Shovel Detective series. I want to say you are wonderful. Last week when you played Sam Shovel, it was so thrilling, I busted out and goose something. I'm coming over to see him in person tonight. Hello, someone outside to see you. Who is it? A goose is simple. <laughs> Well, I can see there's no way of discouraging me from doing that detective story. Uh, go ahead and tell us. What is your Sam Shovel detective story for tonight? Night, I will do one of my most famous pieces. I call it the case of the murdered Lord, or they caught him with his plants down. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel, private detective. It's warm in my little office. It's been warm and sticky all afternoon. On my way to the office, I ran in to hurry the mug. Throw the mug. And spanky the mug. It's really been a muggy day. 